everyone. So this week has been hard for Hollywood and fans all around due to the death of Chadwick Bosman. Uh, sorry, because <laughs> this one kind of came in left field, and so... It kind of took us out of our rotation. This Friday, we were actually supposed to debut our third episode, which would have been on Let's Nostal Geek. Yeah, yeah, Let's Geek on Nostalgia. But we decided that in respect to that, we're not going to cover that. We'll move that to next week. And, um, it's... <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh -huh. it's just... I guess because I'm still processing it as well, um... This happened literally, like, what, se several days ago. Like, this is so fresh. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, it's this, tough. Yeah, it's this, tough. yeah, yeah, especially him. Like, I'm not gonna lie to you when um, Black Panther came out. You know, I'm not into Marvel mm -hmm. in that way. And, um, because I'm a DC girl. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. always that stigma, DC versus Marvel type person, right? I'm Marvel. Oh, okay, so, oh, there we go. Oh, we're totally opposites. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, I remember um, my kid's dad boasting about it. He even, like, uh, like we, we purchased it on um, on Apple, the, uh, what is it, the Apple movie? And I finally got yeah, a Apple chance TV. to watch it, like, um, I don't know, recently, like, during the beginning of the year, which is really ironic. It was, like, the beginning of the year. And um, it's... It feels different. Mm -hmm. I know on my social media, I posted a picture of him with Stan Lee. And I was like, yo. Like, I got goosebumps. I, even though I am a DC girl, like, Stan Lee was really respected anyways. And I came to respect him because of my kid's father. Because he was, he was really obsessed with this man. He was you a know, man ahead of his time. Yeah. Stan Lee was so ahead of his time. Yeah. And so, when I watch, when I look at these two pictures together... It hit differently. It's like it's gonna be two legends gone. Yeah, and I'm just like it. I don't know. It was um. Yeah, but I will say something positive did come out of this. Uh, it's that as I was watching, you know, I'm one of those people when a celebrity dies. Um, I tend to do this. I don't know if it's healthy, but like, I tend to do this deep dive. Like, literally into who they were in their careers. Because I feel like sometimes we don't pay attention. Because we're so used to, okay, you know, they're in this next movie. And you, you watch the press and you do this. But, you know, sometimes you got to take back. And then I go into looking at the research. Uh, or I research to get a look into this person. Or, you know, said celebrity. And then you realize how much of a beautiful person... They, they truly are. Yeah. Yeah. Because as I, you know, I think in past passings, there are certain people that come into earth, they do wonderful things while they're here, and then it's like, we bam. We don't appreciate them until they're gone, but you know what's yeah. one positive thing I can say about Chadwick Boseman? Mm -hmm. Is that he's a man that we did give him his flowers when he was alive. True. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I can say. We did give him his flowers when yeah. he was alive. It's crazy. He became a legend betraying legends. When I heard that statement, I, I don't remember which news outlet uh, said it, but I was just like, damn, that hit really hard. Yeah, his first breakthrough role was in Jackie Robinson. Well, it's the movie 42 with, yeah, you know, uh -huh. where he portrayed I, Jackie yeah. Robinson. I didn't know that. I thought that it, it came after, but... Yeah. Um, Jackie uh, Robinson, for those who are not familiar with him, he's the first African-American to play for National Baseball League, and that was for, at the time, the Brooklyn Dodgers, which is now the Los Angeles Dodgers today. He played third good marshal, first Supreme Court, African-American Supreme Court justice. He also played James Brown and Get On Out. I don't think I need to explain who James Brown is. <laughs> no. That's one person I don't think I need to explain. <laughs> you know. Um, maybe for the newer generation, but y'all anyway. can Google. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the point. Um, <laughs> Joking. <laughs> but the the point is, um, he did bring a positive uh, conversation, though. Yeah. Because I didn't realize, you know, again, it goes back to me, you know, searching up 
uh, who he really was and then reminiscing of all of the funny things because I remember that see uh what is the SNL skit oh what, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yo that oh man he that did it so well yes that, that oh, one of my favorite skits I feel like she may be named Karen and she will put something unnecessary in her potato salad even though I don't know what this dish is called <laughs> of uh, course <laughs> something unnecessary like Raisins, and we say, <laughs> and we say, get away. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. So, getting back to the thought that I was, um, you know, trying to speak upon is that I didn't realize, um, he brought more awareness to the colon cancer. Mm-hmm. And that it, it was like his doctor was talking to a news reporter. I can't remember if it was CNN or not. Cause I feel like a lot of things happens with CNN. So I keep bringing it back to them, but the doctor mentioned or his doctor mentioned that it's most prominent in African Americans or a- Africans colon cancer. Hmm. Yeah. They're that's at actually high risk. something I did not know. Yeah. It was at and high I'm African American and that's something I actually yeah. did not know. Yeah. And so I was just like, what? And so he was going through cancer and visiting children at the cancer centers. He literally was the, in the same boat as them. Yeah. And he was giving them such joy. It, it, this man is just precious. He didn't want sympathy from people. When this man was literally going through surgery while he was... Doing you know. the Black Panther, and you know, all of that time consuming, all that exercise, all them stunts that you have to do under Marvel, under Disney, is very high risk. Like, for this man to do all of that while dealing with cancer and going through chemotherapy, going through all of those things, mm-hmm. that's insane. Yeah. That's a warrior right there. Yeah. That's somebody who's invincible in a way. And the thing that is a little bit complicated, you have some people on the internet who are mad and they're just saying stuff like, oh, y'all shouldn't romanticize the fact that he had cancer. Y'all shouldn't do that. Uh Uh-uh. That sucks. Nobody should have to have cancer in order to be brave. Don't nobody want sympathy. And it's like, I think y'all are taking this, at least from my opinion, for people who are jumping that bandwagon, I think y'all are taking it to heart too much. Basically, at least from my own perspective, because I can only speak for myself, the fact that this man was able to do all of this Mm -hmm. while having cancer, that's incredible to me. And I'm not romanticizing the fact that that cancer is crippled. It's It's bravery. Yes, it's the bravery behind it. Nobody knew. Nobody from Marvel knew. None of his co-stars knew. Barely anybody knew except his circle. And for what that should teach you is that know the people in your circle. Yeah. That's a powerful thing. To have a bond that tight where nobody knew your business. And of course, especially, and I hate to have to say this, being a black celebrity and being in black Hollywood and for that information to not get out, that's a blessing. And y'all have no idea. In terms of this, um... We wanted to take the time and think back because one thing I would say is that um, although, you know, this man was suffering through all this, he gave us light. He gave us joy. He gave us powerful performances. He gave us a superhero. And I don't want to be sad about that. I I want to be happy because think about it. He gave us, like you were saying, he gave us a black superhero. Hello, I am. And you know what's funny? This morning, I actually watched, you know, Spider-Man Into the Universe. I, th- I hope I'm saying it right. Multi-universe. Mm-hmm. That's the one where it's the um, one with Miles Morales. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I watched it this morning before work. I had time, so I said, let me watch it a little bit. I mean, I had time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was so relatable. Like, mm-hmm. I just saw my brothers in that. I saw my godsons in that. It was so well done. I legit saw a black boy as Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Nothing was different except that it was a black boy. I could relate to the character. Not to say that I can relate to Spider-Man, the original character. I love the original Spider-Man. Yeah. 
But as soon as I watched Miles Morales this morning, I felt a relation to it, just like the Black Panther. And I can tell you this, being an African, you know, African-American, my parents are from Africa, I'm first generation. In my community, which is the fully African community, there were... I'm not going to say there was tension or anything because we're not that press. There was some side eye when mm-hmm. the Black Panther came out. Really? Oh, yeah. There was definitely some side eyes I from the, this, the yeah. actual African community because, mm-hmm. you know, whenever a Marvel movie or any superhero movie comes out, you know, everybody wants to wear costumes and do all mm, that stuff like okay, that. Okay. You had Black Americans, like, you know, me being first generation, or you had. Just anybody, you know, just anybody just a fan of the series going to stores and they're buying haftan. Where we're from, um, some of these outfits, I'm using the saying haftan is um, a garment. It's an African garment. Mm-hmm. So they're out here, and kaba. Kaba is another name for it, for a female African garment. There are different names for these. So people were wearing it. Yeah. Where, oh. Yeah. So where I'm from, that's the the names we call right, it, because right, right. each country has a different name for right. them, where I'm from. So I'm using where I'm from. Right. So you see these some of these people wearing half tons. You had some of these people wearing kabas. And this is something that I've seen since the dawn of time, since I'm African. Mm-hmm. These people have are seeing this as costumes. Whereas mm. I'm literally sitting here like, yo, you're wearing like a traditional garment or you're wearing an outfit. You're not even wearing the outfit, Wait, right? Wait, this actually happened? Yes. You wouldn't know. Yeah, you see, no, you wouldn't I know. wouldn't know. Yeah. And the thing about it is I'm not that pressed. We didn't make an uproar about it because we know half the time y'all don't know any better because, you know, we could easily say, hey, we appreciate the fact that you're wearing our outfit because you want to come see the Black Panther movie. But do you know that's a real outfit you're wearing? Like not, you know, because most of the pictures, you know, when the premiere came out, most of the pictures I saw was uh, yeah. people in the actual Black Panther suit. Yes, because they're That's because true. the thing about it is Wakanda is supposed to be a fictional um, African country. Right. So in the movie, which was very well done, my mother actually got to watch Black Panther the day before yesterday on when Chadwick Boseman mm-hmm. passed away. They showed on ABC. Oh. She was the last person in the family to watch it. Everybody in my family has watched that movie already. Course, she was yeah. the last. And she was dissecting it a bit. She was even saying... Really? Yeah. I actually snapped it just the other day. Oh. Yeah, it was where she was looking at it. And she was just so like, that outfit that that actor is wearing, that one, that's a Ghanaian stitch, mm-hmm. like that um, garment right there, they only sew like that in, in um, Ghana only. My mom was just so like, you see that woman over there that's supposed to be a Mandinka woman that's from Senegambia? Yeah, what? she was... I told, Yeah. She was dissecting what? the movie and everything. She said those drums those drums yeah, are from yeah, yeah. my mother was just so like i like the accent she said are they all american and i was like no i said half of them are british right right and half of them are um you know african-americans but most of these people their first generation or their parents are from africa mm-hmm. half of those cast members their parents were like from africa and stuff like that they're like me yeah you know yeah so you know they could already relate and they got themselves a dialect coach and all that you know, and yeah, all I, rem- I, I remember that because yeah. I was watching the behind the scenes. And my mom is even saying she was just so like, whoever their dialect coach was, they did a very, very good job. And she said, but are they trying to be West African? Because isn't the Black Panther <laughs> supposed to be West African? I said, I think I, it's implied. I guess you could say she was like, yeah, their accents are OK for West African, but they're, they're sounding a little bit Eastern African, just a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. So she was really yeah, like yeah. breaking it down. Okay. And she she Aww. she loved the movie. She was just so like, I can see why this movie was great and i'll tell you the story of my brother my brother was upset my youngest brother when the black panther came out mm-hmm. reason why was because of the cultural appropriation behind it i mm-hmm. was impressed about it i right, didn't right. you know i thought it was so lovely he, was, he, he was, was in his feelings yeah mm-hmm. about it and okay. I found out why eventually because I was just like, hey, why are you so in your feelings about this? Right. This is before we were at the movie theaters when he told me the story. And he said, Catherine, he said, I'm over here watching all these kids, all these like adults here wearing haftans or wearing kabas or wearing all this stuff. And it really pisses me off because, Catherine, this is our culture. And I'm like, well... It's America. Everyone's always appropriating everybody's culture. And he was like, Catherine, do you remember when I was like um, seven years old and we did International Day and I wore my half to school? And I said, I actually did remember that. Mm -hmm. My brother wore his traditional garment. Right. And he was seven. This was first or second grade. And he's talking, my parents are from Gambia. This is where I'm from and everything. And I said, I remember that. And he said, 
do you know what really happened? I know that when I came home, I told mommy and I told you guys that I was happy. Everything was good. Do you really know what happened? And I said what he said, even though I was so happy to wear that outfit and show off my, you know, outfit mm-hmm. for Gambia, I got made fun of. He said, I had oh. these kids call me African booty scratcher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, somebody, I'm pretty sure somebody who's listening to this right now is Kiki in and all that stuff, but, I mean, it's hurtful, but yeah, anybody that's African and went to school in America, or maybe even in England, will know what that feeling's like, yeah, African booty scratcher, oh, y'all can't grow y'all's hair, or my favorite, do y'all speak like, or something good. <laughs> you can laugh, Yasmin. It's okay. I know you want to no, laugh. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, okay. It's okay. It's just after you did that, like, you just looked at me like... Yeah. I'm just like... Just so I, I wasn't expecting it. That's what that's what it was. You know, when you come out your house, like, do you find lions and tigers and bears? Like, do you have to fish for your food? Like, we got a lot of these... Yasmin, it's okay. Yeah. You can yeah. laugh. It's okay. <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> Sorry, she wants to laugh. It's no. so obvious, but it's okay. No. It's, it's not that I want to laugh is just it's really unexpected because you know if you think about it okay it it does happen it it is said but it just sucks like you you're my mind went to this seven-year-old was being said that yeah that is crazy yeah and you want to know what's ironic about it he said that's what pissed him off. He said that he remembers his classmates that made fun of him and, and everything. He probably, when he saw these kids wearing that, did it bring him back? It brought yeah. him back to that. And okay. you want to know why I brought him back? Okay. Because, you know, my brother graduated um, high school this year, and he's all gone off to college. I'm proud of my little baby brother. But when the Black Panther came out, he was around, um, I think, I believe 10th grade when mm-hmm. the Black Panther came out. And he said those same dudes that made fun of him in elementary school, yeah. had just seen the Black Panther. And they were telling him, they are like, hey, yo, Malik, we just saw the Black Panther. Yo, that movie is tight. You from Africa, son. Yo, what tribe you at? How do we find out what tribe we from? How do y'all do so-and-so? So is it true in Africa they really do so-and-so? Are you serious? And yeah, and my brother was talking about, he was looking at them like, are they trying to be funny right now? Like, are y'all serious? And he realized they were dead serious. They were so curious. The same people. The same kids. Yeah. Because, you know, they all go to school together and everything through the system. Yeah. He said those same kids. He was just so like, he had a flashback to elementary school and he was looking at them like, y'all, y'all mofos made fun of me back in elementary school when I was wearing this and I was proud of my heritage and everything. Y'all made fun of me so hard. I didn't want to do stuff like this to get made fun of. And now years later, y'all see the movie, the black Panther, the whole culture is getting appropriate. And y'all sitting here acting as if like Africa's the greatest thing. Africa's the, you know, mm-hmm. and that's the issue with African dysphoria. Mm-hmm. But that's the episode for the, you know, that's a future that, that's, episode. Yeah, that's that is a, a future that's an episode. episode for another day. Yeah, no, I completely agree. But, you know, going off back to the story of my little brother, you know, after his frustration where he was talking, because, you know, by the, by the time he had told us this story, the movie was already over. So mm-hmm. my brother was, like I said, my brother was in his feelings. And this is what I basically told him. And you would think this is like something off of a movie. So these three little boys had to be from at least maybe five to seven. Mm-hmm. They had a, but one of them was wearing a Black Panther shirt. The other two little boys had Black Panther masks and they're just all like playing Black Panther and everything like that. And I told my brother, I said, you see those little boys in that corner right there? And he's like, yeah. And I'm just like, that's all that matters. I said, so every time you get mad, about how people are acting because of this movie and overhyping this movie because of the whole African thing and making fun of us and them wanting to be African now, especially with the amount of African dysphoria. Look at these kids. That's what matters. They got somebody to look up to. Yep. When I was a little kid, I did not have a princess to look up to. The closest black princess that I had to look up to was Brandy and Cinderella. Deadass. That was the closest. And she's still one of my favorite Cinderella's. She was so beautiful. Brandy was so beautiful doing that. Yeah. And then And it's funny, that when that mm-hmm. film came out, nobody talked about how mm-hmm. it was mixes of races in it there. It was so good. Yeah. 
No, but it's like you had the black like, mama with the white daddy having an Asian baby your, yeah, out right? here marrying a black chick, making a Blasian family, and nobody questioned it. Yeah, that mm-hmm. movie was that damn good. Yep. And then you had a godmother going, "Impossible things are happening every day." Oh, my oh God. I love her. Yes, she said, "Say it with your chest." Why are you down here? Have you seen that video? No. Oh, which one? Actually, can I share that to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Let's pause. Hello everyone. So I have a partnership with a brand called SaltyMermaid.com. At SaltyMermaid.com you can get the best bathing suits in all shapes and sizes for guys and girls. And best part, they have matching bathing suits and you can match with whomever you want. Tell them Kat sent you and put the code SALTY15CAT and you'll get 15% off your purchase. That's SaltyMermaid.com. Tell them Kat sent you and the code is SALTY15CAT. Chadwick Boseman is African American. He's from South Carolina. He was born in 1976. Both his parents are African American, but he ended up do, um, doing a DNA um, research where he right. found his genealogy and he found out he was Creole. Do you know how happy that makes me? Because I'm Creole. Really? Yeah. Oh. Creole is the people of Sierra Leone. With, um, even though my family's from Gambia, they originated from Sierra Leone. Mm. Yeah, that's a tribe. And he's also Yoruba. And most Creole people originate from the Yoruba people, which also come from Nigeria. Yeah. Oh. And I was that. a so like Chadwick Boseman. I said, for real? <laughs> I said, you my oh. brother, oh. You my brother. <laughs> yes. Oh. Yes, brother. Oh. And you know, one good thing I will say, in Africa, yeah. we all, each country has a tradition for where they bury somebody. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. I can say, he did Africa proud. Really? Yeah. One of the things that I'd read up on Chadwick Boseman when he did the Black Panther is he had asked the director if he could do, like, if he could actually do an African accent. They almost wanted him to do, like, a kind of British accent, and he said no. And this is where this Howard HBCU comes in the clutch, because we ain't never going to sleep on HBCU training, respected always. <laughs> No, because people don't put enough respect on HBCU education. So I'm going to tell y'all now, listeners, respect it. He came from the drama department of Howard University, which is where Right, I remember that. Mm -hmm. And then he did his uh, speech. Yeah, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Felicia Rashad came from. It's very intense. I actually auditioned there. Of course, I didn't get into the department, but I did audition there. It is a very intense program. Mm, And maybe Mm -hmm. for my graduates, they would accept me one day, I would hope, you know, with God's blessing. Yeah. But yeah, he said, I want to do an African accent. They said, no, we don't want to like you to screw up your African accent and you start offending people and everything because, you know, we're in a day and age. That's, you know, yeah, that's true because uh, it, you're right. We yeah. are in a day, especially in 2020, where anything you do or say, you are going to just be scrutinized if it's something's not right, mm-hmm. you know? And then it'll be like, it'll sound like a mockery. Yeah. But he did it justice. And he said, I no. believed it. And that's the thing. He mm-hmm. One of the things they teach us in theater school is to challenge. Like, always challenge your character. Yeah. Once in a while, even challenge your director. And that's what, yep. what he did. He took that HBCU training and he challenged the director. And he said, at the end of the day, he said that T'Challa is a man from Africa. Mm-hmm. Why would he have a European accent? True. Wakanda is a country that has no colonization associated with it at all. Not a single source of colonization is associated with that country. So how can he have a British accent? When did it come from? He yeah. said, well, Wakanda is a country about Africa. I should have an African accent. Which makes a lot of sense yeah. because he has that quote, mm-hmm. when you're playing a character, you want to know the full landscape. Living. You want to know them spiritually, mentally, and physically. And that's what he did. And I can and say as an did. actor, we always have to hide our feelings we always true. have to pretend to have the time. That's like, true. And, you know, that's why you see a lot of actors, they deal with things like depression, they deal with issues like anxiety, or they're quiet, or you see them meditate. You know, when I first started theater school, they always used to tell us, meditate every day if you have to. Please follow yoga, do some kind of exercising every day, do something. Please make sure you incorporate some kind of exercise in your life. Mm-hmm. And I used to laugh about it and everything because, you know, that seems like such a stereotype, like in Hollywood where they're always doing yoga, the actors and actresses, but no, we really need to do it. Yeah. 
because the stress we do when you're an actor you are an empath that's what people don't understand when you're an actor or an actress you are an empath meaning that you pick up on people's emotions and you touch up on people's emotions you don't know the feeling of having to wake up at 7 a.m and have to be vulnerable when you're in a good ass mood but we do it for the art we do it for the storytelling so what Chadwick Boseman put his, what he was going through aside for his mission, he knew that the character T'Challa, the Black Panther, was changing things. Yeah. The Black Panther is a person we can look up to forever, that I will say. You know, Chadwick Boseman is an actor, and I don't even want to do this because it's just, like, as an actor, we always have to put what we're dealing with behind us, yes, man. And I'm being a hundred percent honest. We always gotta hide our feelings, so we have to. We are the biggest empaths. So seeing that, that is just an example of what we deal with. Nobody knew what he was going through, and that's what we gotta always do. We give our lives to our craft. We do it for y'all. We even take the biggest pay cuts sometimes. Just to make sure that the role you're doing is telling your story. When you're saying that every character mm-hmm. you do, you tell your story. That's what they taught me at Towson, too. Always tell, make sure that each yeah. character you're doing, you're telling a story. It's the same thing in don't the art of writing. Short. Yeah, don't sell Because the short. art of a writer and an actor go hand in hand. Because these beautiful writers put these stories out you know for actors and actresses to portray these characters and bring them to life like you just sit here and i hate to say this slide because i just say this as a joke but kind of like half joke i'm like black people can't have shit man <laughs> like i mean they took uh, there was that like, one guy from tiktok they took the black mamba and black panther in the same year like for real they did that's crazy because 20, 2020 with bringing me back to what happened in 2016. Yeah. All these legends started passing and the one I that hit that. Mo- the most was was um Prince for me. Prince is 2016. Literally it just feels sometimes like we can't have anything, but I will say whoever takes over as the Black Panther, you have big shoes to fill. And I feel bad for the next person a little bit because you're going to judge the f- out of that person. Yeah, that's they true. Are. It's, it's that stigma. And, it's, and a, it's, it's not always... fair at all. It's not fair. And I sat there yesterday and I actually thought, like, who could take over? And I actually personally had an idea. And I think, I don't remember his name officially, but um, Denzel Washington's son. Is he an actor as well? Yes, Denzel's Washington. Yes, John Washington. That's his name. If anyone can take over the role of the Black Panther, in my opinion, yeah, I think John Washington can do it. And you know, I feel it's a circle coming to play because I don't know if you heard the last story in the last um, few hours that when Chad McBoseman went to um, Howard University. He got a scholarship to study in London for a semester. Felicia Rashad was mm-hmm. his teacher and mentor at the time. And they needed a scholarship to send students there. Mm-hmm. And she contacted Denzel Washington, who is her friend, like, Hey, Denzel, do you think you could donate some money for some of the kids at school, you know, Howard, to go? Because, you know, we're trying to raise. And Denzel Washington... He's always, he donates a lot of charities. He's had a partnership with the Boys and Girls Club for decades because that's what made him grounded. Donated, Chadwick Boseman went to, you know, school with um, Denzel Washington paying his tuition. I remember that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that story. Years later, they did a, um, one of those dinners where they did a, um, you know, Thing to Denzel Washington. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, mm-hmm. and Chadwick Boseman was selected to do the speech there. And oh, at the speech... I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chadwick Boseman actually got to tell Denzel Washington, hey, I should let you know, back in the year 2000, I got into this, um, you know, I went to London for a semester at Howard, and I wanted to let you know that you paid for it, 
<laughs> you know? And he said the first thing Denzel Washington said was, Oh really? So you owe me money. Like, <laughs> I think I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, they it just was, said it, it was on the news. Blowing up a, as a meme. Yeah. yeah. It was a meme. Which, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is just wonderful and it and it says because, you know, it's a ripple effect to see Denzel Washington talk about his first time meeting Chaz with Bozeman and saying that, wow, this is what my belief, because, you know, he was, he didn't go to Howard, mm-hmm. but he's studied at Howard, you know, he's taught, he's been there, you know, occasionally Denzel Washington. So to be, you know, this established person to know that somebody looks up to me, I was able to pay for a child years later and the same child could come to me and say, you're the reason I'm here. Look at God, that's a blessing in disguise coming into one. I will say it again, Chadwick Boseman, you have done Africa so proud when they say, you know, we are burying a king. We are really burying a king. And, you know, I'll give you the old Senegambian saying, Dena la gisibes. Once again, I'll say it one more time. Dena la gisibes, which translated into English means till I see you again. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so all. touching. Yep. Yeah. I there's a song people, yeah most people are saying rest in power yeah because you know in gambia there in senegal there's a um a, well mostly they said in gambia there's a song that um we sing when somebody passes away they normally sing it after they officially bury the person mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. it's called dena legacy best and it's called till i see you again unfortunately it the song's in wolof so i can't really sing it in wolof yeah. But that's the title of it, and that's what we always sing. So, f- for him, being the Black Panther, all I'm just picturing is an African funeral. I just would wish, if I could wish it for him, I'd wish Africa could give him a funeral like that ass. Yeah. Thank you for being a role model, Chadwick Boseman, because you are going to be planted on this earth forever. For all these little black boys and black girls, you truly did that. You killed it. Like freaking Wakanda forever. Like for real, for real. Also, cherish the moments that you have with each other because these stories are very hard. They get touching. And tomorrow's never promise. That's true. If we want to take away from this love one, yeah. <laughs> Love <laughs> Just remind the people around you that you love them. And then dwell in the positive impact that these people leave on earth. You know, yeah, yes, it is sad, it's heartbreaking, and it hurts. But at the same time, they gave us a lesson. Mm-hmm. They gave us they gave us their essence, their presence. They their gave memories, us their, their voices. Their imprint on the world. Jadwick Boseman's been imprinted on the world. We're never going to forget that name. Yeah. I know. Trust me, we're not going to no. forget that name. Never. He's our Black Panther. I want to remind our listeners of a few things since this is a special episode. We will not be doing a Cheese nor Wild Story segment. And since we have entered September throughout the whole month, please make sure you will be registered to vote. Also, Every state is different, so make sure that you have updated information. Just remember, our vote counts and our voices needs to be heard. And let us know what your favorite memory of Chadwick Bosman is. Leave a comment below on our YouTube channel or hit us up on Twitter at Let's Geek Pod and Instagram Let's Geek On Pod. All right, guys, I hope you have a blessed day. Peace be with you. And until next time, where we speak on nostalgia yeah. so we'll well next episode will be on the lighter yeah end of we'll go back to the comedy we'll be back on regular yeah. schedule and i do want to say this as an ending note and please put this in here because i want to give you your props oh okay shout out to yasmin because it just occurred to me that yasmin is going to edit and do all of this in three days that is badass to me. <laughs> you have no idea. And the reason why I say it's badass because even though she and I have talked about this, this is where she comes in. I am not the behind the scenes person. <laughs> she's gonna f*** it up. Like she's even gonna like, you know, bleep what I'm saying. Let me show you how good she is. She's gonna f*** it up. F*** it up. 
Yeah, yeah, because I want you to do that edit in there. <laughs> That's how good she is, and I'm putting that in there so somebody hears this episode in the future. They could say, "You see how much she's bleeping her out." <laughs> That's talent. So shout out to Yasmin oh, for being you. the queen she is. Thank you for editing this for y'all in three days for this to air on this day. So I put it out there. All right, thank you. Oh, I feel so appre- no, I feel I want appreciated. That in there. I, I, I feel can't so- wait for you to edit that part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, have a blessed day. Hopefully, you. Uh... Oh, I thought we were done. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, bye, guys. We love you. Bye.